friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Heidi. This is my reading life and I'm here to start another vlog. I am here in beautiful Greenville, Maine for a little getaway couple nights uh, in a cabin in Greenville, Maine. As you can see behind me, it's absolutely beautiful up here right now this time of year in the fall. Please come to Maine in the fall and visit me in the fall. It is the best. It is the best time of year. Um, and so it's Friday the 27th and I did finish another shorty. So I figured I'd start the vlog by talking about the one that I finished. And that is, if you can see it, The Kissing Bug by Daisy Hernandez. And this one was, um, I don't have the cover. It's a hardcover and I unfortunately left my book jacket at home. Um, but this is the book that we were reading for the Book Naturalist Book Club, the second one for the month of September. And it is about the Chagas disease, which is a disease that's carried by a parasite. And the way that humans get it is they get bitten by a particular kind of insect called a kissing bug. And the um, kissing bug is endemic to uh, hot countries. So South America, Latin America, Central America, um, Southern US states like Texas, places like that. Uh, so the author is herself uh, Colombian heritage. She moved here. Um, her parents moved here uh, when they were young people and she was born in the US, I believe. No, she, is that right? Yeah, she was born in the US. And so she had an aunt who had Chagas. Um, and so she's exploring not only the disease itself, so you're getting science writing about the disease and how the disease works and how it is passed uh, between uh, living creatures. And you're also getting her memoir of her family and particularly her aunt's medical condition, but also her relationship with her aunt because Daisy Hernandez is gay and her aunt did not um did not accept that and so there was they had a very uh difficult relationship after daisy hernandez came out so you're getting that part of the memoir and you're also getting medical history of um, epidemiology and how disease is treated differently between different population groups in the u.s and around the world for that matter um, you're getting all kinds of stuff in here and I love this kind of nonfiction that kind of mixes up genres and provides sort of the whole picture of an issue and this is one that talks about social justice it talks about science it talks about personal you know personal anecdotes in this author's life so yeah I really enjoy this um, I will give a full review as I always do at the end of the month for the two book naturalist books that I read this month but for now Kissing Bug completed that um, and I will bring you along with me as we explore the Greenville area on this little mini getaway. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it.
it's September 27th, I think. Is that right? Oops, sorry, 28th, Saturday. Um, and you are precariously propped up on a pillow. So uh, hopefully this will work. I am still, we're getting ready to leave the little cabin we've been staying at for the last couple of nights up here in the Greenville area of Maine. And it's just lovely. It's so cozy and just really charming. Um, it reminds me a lot of my parents' house growing up. They still live in a log cabin, but it reminds me a lot of my parents' house. So it felt, felt right at home. Um, and we did a lot of exploring around the Greenville area yesterday, as you have seen, and that was great. Um, and I also did some reading. And so I finished another book for Shorty September. This is The End of Days by Jenny Erpenbeck, and it is translated from the German by Susan Bernofsky. And um, this is about 238 pages long, so it fits in my definition of under 250 pages for a Shorty. And this was a gift to me from Britta last year for my birthday. So I'm glad that I read it before my upcoming birthday. <laughs> so I, I did complete something within a year on my TBR shelf, which always feels good. Um, so this is basically kind of a Groundhog Day type story. And it is taking place in Germany throughout the 20th century. Um, so we start out at the very beginning of the 20th century with a young family um, suffering a tragedy. And we see where that tragedy sort of takes the family. Uh, the wife is Jewish and the husband is um, not Jewish. And uh, sort of this tragedy in their life sort of unravels their family. And so we, this is split up into like four sections, four or five sections. And each section basically takes what happens in the previous section and rewinds it and says, well, but what if this tragic part didn't happen? What would happen to the characters then? And you go through succeeding generations telling that story. So what would have happened if that particular tragedy didn't happen? And in the background of this story is the history of what's occurring in um, Europe, in particular what's happening to Jewish people in Europe in this time. Um, and the story sort of spans Germany, Austria, uh, Russia, or the Soviet Union, um, depending on <laughs> which time period you're in. Um, so it's very interesting, especially for an American reader, I think, to read this perspective. Um, it is, like I said, there's quite a bit of tragedy in it. Um, there's some very difficult subject matter that happens in it, but it's very female-centered as well, which I very much appreciated and really gets at um, what it's like to be a wife and mother in this time period under these conditions with these stigmas uh, that ride you, whether you like it or not, no matter how much you try to get away from them. And then what happens if you deny certain aspects of your culture, heritage, whatever, um, how does that impact succeeding generations? And then, you know, what a, by hiding certain parts of your past, what do you leave your ancestors? And um, what gaps do you leave in their lives? And what knowledge do they not have because you chose to um, leave them without that information? Uh, so I really enjoyed this book a lot, even though it is quite what's the word I want? I think it's, uh, it's melancholy in its, uh, in its tone. Um, but the writing is very good and the format, this sort of Groundhog Day type retelling of the story is really excellent. Um, there is one of the sections is sort of written in a different style than the other four or five. And that one was, harder for me because it was t it takes place in the Soviet Union um during the time period was it the Soviet Union yet it's post World War II but pre Gorbachev <laughs> um is all I could tell you and it's it reminded me a lot of my reading about communist China um so reading about communist Russia or Soviet Union is like the whole, you know, people informing on each other and being interrogated all the time and having to like look at actions that you've taken throughout your life from through different lenses, depending on who's who's in power at the moment versus who's been denounced and sent off to labor camps or executed or whatever. And that reminded me a lot of my reading about communist China. So that was a little bit different than the other sections, but like really giving that, um, that sort of 
viewpoint into this time period in European history. So yeah, very much recommend this. If you have never read, I had never read any Jen, Jenny Erpenbach before, and I am so glad that I have now tried this author because I thought this was a really great book and I'm so glad I read it. So that's what I've completed. Um, I don't know what I will start next. So it's Saturday. That means I have three days left of Shorty September. I would like to try to finish at least one more Shorty before the end of the month, but I don't know which one of my stack I'm going to pick. Um, stay tuned for that. <music> September 30th and I have finished another shorty. I finished A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. This is book four in the A Court of Thorn and Roses series. I think it's four. Yes, four. <laughs> and it is a shorty. It is only 233 pages and it's essentially a novella. It is essentially a Christmas story. I mean, it sort of bridges the storyline between the last book and the next book. Um, it just pretty much brings us up to where each of the main characters are mentally with what has gone on in the previous stories. Um, not a whole lot of action happens. It's a lot more feelings rather than action in this book. I did enjoy my time with it. I do think it's a little bit of a indulgence on the part of the author or maybe it's just fan service. That's probably more like it. It's probably fan service considering how popular this series is. But um, it was you know, I did enjoy my time spent with it and it was, uh, not a, um, it was not taxing to read at all. So that was lovely to read. I bought it on Saturday, started reading it Saturday night, finished it up today. So, uh, Monday. So yeah, that is a success. I am about three essays away from completing one more shorty. Um, so hopefully I will do that before the end of the day. It is about 3 p.m. right now. Uh, I think I can do it. <laughs> Pretty sure I can. So I won't close the vlog out yet. I will wait and see how I do and I will come back and report on any further progress that I make. <music> Happy October. It is October 1st and I'm here to finish up my Shorty September reading vlog that I had started. Um, and I did end up finishing one last book on September 30th that I have not yet spoken about and that is Sexographies by Gabriella Weiner translated by Lucy Greaves and Jennifer Edcock. And this author is from Peru and this was translated 
Um, so it's translated and it's a shorty. It's about 230 pages. It's a collection of essays. Um, and it is, I will just say, warning <laughs> that it is sexually explicit. The author is very interested in exploring um, all different forms of sexual expression. And she is a little bit of an exhibitionist, I would say. Um, so she definitely does not shy away from describing describing her personal sexual experiences in very graphic detail. So if that's not something you're interested in reading about, um, just be aware that there's quite a few essays in here that delve into that topic. But there are also essays about motherhood. There is a really lovely essay about um, Isabel Allende and Isabel Allende's position in Peruvian culture and in sort of the culture of South American literature um, in the big picture. And I found that to be very fascinating. That was probably my favorite essay in the whole collection. Um, this was an uneven collection for me. Uh, I, I thought that the problem that I had for most of this was that the topics are treated very in a very surf, superficial man, um, very surface level manner. And uh, that for me, I would prefer my essay collections to sort of delve into the context around the topic that the author is talking about. Um, and I thought that a lot of the way that the author talked about her different experiences was very surface level and was also um, almost seemed to be like she was like, see what I've done. Isn't that shocking? <laughs> and and her uh, perhaps her 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 purpose was to shock rather than to um, educate or or to try to gain some sort of broader understanding about the activity she was um, indulging in. Because um, there's essays about her taking these um, traditional drugs that uh, are often used like hallucinatory drugs that are used in Peruvian culture. There's an essay about her going to this workshop where you're supposed to like, oops, the uh, table of contents popped up there, um, where you're supposed to like experience um, near death or something like that. You know, so very strange. Uh, she's definitely seeking out strange activities. Um, the very last essay also probably I should say is about her experience with domestic abuse. And that was, um, I thought that was a very good essay. But again, if that's not a topic that you care to read about, you know, be aware of that. But I am glad that I have read more um, South American literature. And I am also, I don't think I had read anything by an author from Peru. So that's always a good thing. It's always good to broaden your horizons and to read from a different perspective. So I am very glad that I read this collection for that. And oh, and I should also say that I was buddy reading this with Britta Bowler. And of course, our conversations about the book <laughs> were highly, highly um, interesting and helped me place a lot of this information in context. Um, so always, as is always the case, I learn more from my buddy readers and uh, get more out of a book in the in the process of doing a buddy read. So that was the last book that I completed for Shorty September. Um, and not that this counts for Shorty September, but I did just finish reading this. Um, also a short book uh, at lunchtime. This is Fatty Legs. A true story uh, of, this is by Christy Jordan Fenton and Marguerite Uliman Pokiak Fenton. Um, Uliman is the person, This she is an indigenous woman and she experienced life in the residential school in far northern uh, Canada. She was, uh, she, she chose to go to school. She wanted to go to school because she wanted to learn to read. Um, and then she had a very terrible time uh, in two years that she spent um, without being able to go home at this residential school. It was a Catholic girls, uh, Catholic, had boys and girls, but Catholic school. Um, and it's written, this is written for like the middle grade audience. So it's very um, written for that audience. So it's simple language, has beautiful illustrations, has excellent photography, from the uh, from uh, Uleman's family history and shows pictures of her family that are, have been taken from historical archives and things like that. And there's also, at the end, there's an excerpt from another book uh, that has been written about Uleman's life. Um, Christy Jordan Fenton is her daughter-in-law. And so they sort of have formed this partnership to produce these stories um, of Uliman's life and fascinating, just absolutely fascinating and so well told. This is about 140 pages long. 
Um, I highly recommend it. This is the 10th anniversary edition. So it has, you know, full color illustrations, full and the photography and everything. It has lots of resources in here. Um, just, just an excellently produced book, I think. Um, so yeah, very much uh, enjoyed my time with this. Doesn't count for my total for Shorty September, but I did just finish it. So I wanted to include it as another example of a short book. Um, so I read a total of 22 books in September, one of which was not a Shorty. Um, but so 22 books in one month is fabulous. Uh, I think it's a little bit less than I read in the previous year. I think I did 25 last September. So, but 22 is still very, very good. So I'm very pleased with how I did, I'm so pleased with Shorty September as a reading theme. I think it's really fun and I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to participate. Thanks again to Bert at the Storytime and Heather from Too Many Heathers for for hosting us uh, for this reading theme, themed month. Um, and yeah, can't wait to do it again next year. Hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read. I'll talk to you later.